Well, good evening and welcome to Alta Valley. My guest this night is uh, Adriana Keith, and uh, <laughs> she is a business consultant. Has her own business in Uxbridge. In Uxbridge, yeah. But you actually you you reach out even further than Uxbridge. Yeah, it started online, and now I'm pulling it back into Uxbridge. Yeah, yeah. it usually goes the other way. Yeah, usually. <laughs> but. Uh, so how long have you been in business now at Uxbridge? About three years. Oh. Yeah. And you've built up some clientele in the area? Yeah, more so actually nationally. Um, and now I'm pulling it closer to home, where I have actually have quite a bit of clients from Grafton, Millbury, that area. Oh. Yeah. Well, the valley is growing fast. It is. It I is. I mean, really, I mean, it's a lot. I've always said that logistics was going to be the big thing in the valley. Because of our location with 146, and once the uh, interchange to Mass Pike came about, that really opened it up. Yeah, true. We have access to all of New England, so logistics seems right. But it, with logistics comes other business. Very true. It's easy to get into the city from here, and yes. it's not too far from actually any city. Providence, Worcester, right. Boston, not too far, yeah. And. Uh, land is a little cheaper mm -hmm. than what you find closer to the cities, yeah. as well as the tax rate. <laughs> and these are all important to business. Yes. But yeah, as a business consultant, what do you do now for a business? Well, it depends on the type of business or business owner. I started working with mainly entrepreneurs and helping them understand how to utilize their energy in the most efficient way. And now lately, I've been taking all my knowledge into corporations and companies where they're asking oh. for understanding each other's energy, team building, leadership, working together better. So it's definitely expanding into bigger companies, which is really exciting to see. That's always been important in corporate America that mm -hmm. people work as a team. Because yeah. if you work together, if you, and, and you can always have conflicts within the corporation. It's like a family. Yeah, it is. And that, and that's when things that go wrong. <laughs> it is. Everyone has their own dynamics, their own way of communicating, of learning, and it's difficult to understand each other unless you have this open line of communication and you have this right. feeling of safety with one another. And so when I come in, it's it's teaching them about their own unique energy and the way that they do communicate and opening up that safety zone almost for each other. And then get them to work together mm -hmm. rather against each other. Yes. Yeah. Because sometimes it can be a little competition because everyone, someone's trying to make it up higher than, you know, get, get a better position. Yeah. They'll step on someone else to do it, and that doesn't help the corporation. No. And that you try to advise them not to do that, right? Yes, and there's everyone's just built so differently. Some yes. people have more drive and ambition and energy, but right. other people don't have the same. Like me, I'm an energizer bunny, but not everyone has the same amount of energy as me, and we're not all designed the same way. So it's also helpful for people who aren't as ambitious or high achieving for them to feel safe and knowing that it's okay to not have that same energy. Now, do you do that by having a meeting amongst all the employees for the corporations and companies it yeah. will depend some of the companies i've spoken with the entire group mm -hmm. if they were smaller others it's been teams within the corporation specific groups within it but i will talk to them all as a whole group and you do team exercises yes yeah yeah I, that even when i was in corporate that was quite common mm -hmm. that was 20 years ago yeah <laughs> it's changing now though they're looking, um, what I do is pretty unique. It's actual energetics. It's not um, personality tests or anything like that. So corporations are starting to understand that someone's physical body is actually designed in a different way than someone else's, not just the way their brain functions, but their body. So it's really interesting to see them embrace something like what I do, where they're understanding there's deeper levels to all of this. Right. Well, today in corporate America, it's a lot different, too, because people don't interact like they used to. Everybody's mm -hmm. on a computer now. Yeah, yeah. And you communicate e even within the corporation by a computer. Mm -hmm. so, or remotely at home. Rem yeah, and that's yeah. a lot of it now. Yeah, yeah. That, that's becoming more common, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Very much so. 
a lot of companies just stuck with remote and said, if you know, you're more productive at home, and that's, again, someone's energy might just work better at home. Because this came about with the epidemic. Yep. But then they found it worked out pretty well, mm -hmm. and you don't have to buy office space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. You can cut down on the amount of corporate space yeah. you require by having everybody stay home. Yeah. It also made moms a lot happier. Yes. Because, you know, if a kid gets sick or they have to do a doctor's appointment or whatever, um, just imagine how much easier that was on moms or caregivers who take the brunt of that work. That was a game changer for them and how they could show up for themselves and the company that they work for. Right, and of course the internet that makes this possible too. Mm-hmm, yeah. Because I'm amazed at how many people are working from home. Mm-hmm. I think that's why the gas prices are down because people are <laughs> traveling to work. <laughs> that's true, I didn't even think of that, but that's true, yeah. it could be. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's down to $3 a gallon, yeah. and I think that's because people aren't buying it because they're not mm -hmm. traveling to work. Yep, that's true. And here again, it makes it great for this time of year. In New England, you know, we get the bad weather. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have to worry about right. driving in on a snow yeah. day. But my poor kids, they'll still have to do their schoolwork from home if they have laptops. So they don't right. get snow days anymore. <laughs> do they? Do the kids actually get schoolwork on the snow days? They were last year and the year before. This year they actually did not take a laptop home, so they actually <laughs> got a snow day. But before, you know, they, if they had their laptop, they still had schoolwork. I think that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great idea. Eventually, we won't have to build schools anymore. Everybody will take learn from home, oh, right? That would be so sad. What yeah. about the kids who thrive in groups? Well, that's the other thing. Okay, yeah. in business as well. Yeah, that's something that you mm -hmm. might have you probably uh, consult on as yes. well because you don't have that socialization. You don't have the water cooler gathering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's something I learned about me that I really needed. Like this morning, I, you know, I work from my office at home most of the time. Right. I needed to get out of the house, so I just went down to Ignition Nutrition, and I sat in there with her, and I had a shake, and I spoke with her. And, you know, she said she didn't get a lot of people who did that, and I think we need to remember that getting out and talking to other people again is really healthy for most of us. But some people, it's better for them to just work on their own at home. But I like being around other people. It's good for me. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I've always been in sales, and telemarketing is a big thing today. Mm. But I don't like it. I like face-to-face. -face. Yeah. In fact, there was a mortgage company called Face-to-Face. -face. <laughs> I remember, I, and I thought, that, that guy makes sense. Do you want to deal with someone that you don't even see their face? Yeah. Yeah, that's hard. <laughs> right. I mean, but that that's happening today. People get loans. Yep. People... Uh, get mortgages, mm -hmm. they buy cars, they, they don't, without even meeting someone. That's true, yeah. In fact, in some cases, you do everything over the, over the Internet and you don't even talk to someone. Yeah, you, you use a robot, AI on the other side. Yes, yeah. I know. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I think that takes the, person, the personality out of it. It, def it definitely does. But yeah. you find that uh, people are hurting by not getting into the office as much? I do. I think there's, uh, right now everyone's feeling really lonely. And I hear it from yeah. my clients over and over again. Um, and, you know, the hard part is we don't, in this area where we live, there's not really anything for a co-working space. If you go into Boston or bigger cities, they have these big, beautiful co-working spaces. We don't really have anything like that here. And so I think it it's difficult for people who work from home or remotely to remember that, there are spaces that they can make for themselves and also that they just need it sometimes. Well, well co-working space, you're talking about, you don't, it's not necessarily your, your employer, mm -mm. but you, no. you go to a place where you, it's like, like you might say go to the library and work the yes. computer. right, just like that. Some of them, even out in Boston especially, some of them have daycares so you can bring your kids. Oh. Um, they have podcasting stations and rooms, things like that. Some of them are really great. We don't, just don't have anything like that in small towns most of the time. Oh, yeah, that's a great concept. Mm -hmm. I know uh, many years ago was when only the husband worked, back in the 50s and 60s. Yeah. The wives complained that they were lonely because mm -hmm. they were stuck home all day. The kids were in school and they were alone. And yeah. All they did was clean the house or, yeah. and cook the meals. And they were, it, was long, it was a yeah. lonesome life. Mm -hmm. And now you're going back to that where yeah. people are staying home by themselves. Yeah. 
in some cases, one of the, out of the out of the husband and wife, only one works from home. The other one might still be going to work, so they're home all day alone. Mm -hmm. Kids are in school, and they're they're sitting at that computer by themselves. Yeah, and I, I join virtual networking a lot but it's still not the same as being in person with a group. So right. I, I started my own monthly group meetups for female entrepreneurs. So we've been meeting almost every month since May of last year, and it's, it's really helpful. It's very invigorating and inspiring. Oh, the, the uh, chamber does that. Yes, yeah, they do some too. Yeah, they have a round table. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a way of people getting to talk to one another. Yeah. And you really need to talk to one another to know what's going on and to get other ideas. Yeah. And just connect and make relationships with other people. Right. That's what business really is. So you suggest that to companies then? Oh, yeah. Well, it, it yes. If they work from home, I suggest either going into the office when it feels good, when you can, or finding some sort of co-working space. Again, not all the time because, you know, I'm a mom of three, so I get being home with the kids can be easier a lot of the times. Right. But the seclusion that the majority of people feel right now is it's really difficult to watch. So I just wish there were more spaces like that in this area in particular. Right. I mean, isn't tempting, though, when you're home all day to probably, well, I kind of watch this TV show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not for me because I'm very, I'm very uh, goal-oriented and right. I set my tasks and I do it. It's your own company, too. When yeah. it's your own company, you yeah. got to work hard. Yes, yeah. Some people struggle with working from home and they say that all the time, but some people really thrive with it and they do really well, but just sometimes they just need to mix things up a little. It gets very stale. Right. I mean, but it's easy to have the TV on in the background. <laughs> <laughs> when you're home, yeah. which is not a good idea either. Yeah, no, probably not. You should not. be concentrating on your job. <laughs> but I am amazed at how many corporations are doing that now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is a, actually, it's like giving a person a raise too because they don't have that commute cost. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in some cases, if you're commuting into the city, there's an added cost of parking. Mm -hmm. So all that's gone away. It's not just the cost of a vehicle or running it. Yeah. A lot of cost cutting for sure. Um, some companies did require that people go back in though, and I know a few friends who lost jobs because they didn't want to go back in. Oh, but it's it, they're pretty rare. <laughs> yeah, but now aren't they kind of mixing it up a little bit? Uh, you, you go in for a couple of days, but the rest of the week you stay home. Yeah, yeah, I see a lot of that. Yeah, and that that way you satisfy both ends. Mm -hmm. You got that socializing, but you also are, are working from home as well. Yeah. There is a good amount of that now. Yeah, it's amazing how things are, you know, and it's, it's great that it was realized by, by corporations. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know for, uh, myself, I spent 20 years working uh, remotely for my company because we didn't have an office. Oh, yeah. You know, and my boss worked out of his house, I worked out of my house. How and did that feel? It was nice. It, yeah. it had more freedom. Yeah. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, we worked on salary and we didn't work per, by hour. So, you know, you, sometimes you worked longer, sometimes you worked less. Mm -hmm. Whatever you had to do would get the job done. Yeah. And I, I liked that. It was almost like having your own business. I do feel like we're getting back to that a little bit, where it's not a strict nine to five. It's right. a, is the job done? Are you doing a good job? And that's what matters. And that's really refreshing to see. Because why sit there when you've done everything you need to for the day or you've hit your goal or whatever? What's the point? Right. <laughs> I think that makes a lot of sense because yeah. that, that ends the clock washer. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going to sit there and keep, oh, well, I, I don't really <laughs> want to do any more. You know, it's less productive. Yeah, it is. If it's you, draining. If, if, you, if you tell them they can go when they're done, they're going to be more productive, get it, get more done and get mm -hmm. it out of the way. Yeah, that's why companies are doing things like unlimited paid time off. And they don't, it's not that they're taking advantage of it, they're, they're respecting it. And you're right. seeing this, this good change in culture, absolutely. Yeah. So you're seeing a lot, and these are the things you, you tell companies that they should do then. Well, as far as unlimited PTO and things like that, not so much. That's more of, um, I suppose, HR, I guess. But yeah. I'm working more with the team, specifically the team, and their day-to-day. -day. Okay, both teamwork. Yeah, yeah. 
And you, you find that with small companies as well as large companies, that's important, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I just had um, a company the other day, and she could not understand why her team couldn't grasp what she was telling her. And then when we dug a little bit deeper into just the way that she flows every single day, she's very strategic. She sees, she looks at something and she understands how to get from A to Z like that. And not everyone's built that way. So we talked about how to put SOPs together and creating videos so that she doesn't have to keep repeating herself. But oh. it, there's really a lot of giving each other grace for understanding we're all different and unique and learning how to teach one another. How do you reach out to get these companies to get a hold of you? That's a great question. It's all my network. It's all mm -hmm. um, meeting me meeting people, the relationships that I've built. I've grown this very organically in that way. Um, not so much paid marketing or anything like that. A lot of uh, people telling people. Yes. And I've spoken at conferences. I speak at workshops. So people find me that way too. Oh, yeah, all, all this out of Uxbridge. A little bit further. Well, Worcester... Um, well, no, you, you're based on your yes. not switch. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm amazed sometimes when I hear about, the, you know, I, work, I work with the chamber. Yeah. I'm amazed at businesses that are in the valley. They're very cool. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of different types of businesses. Yeah. Of course, you see that now. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the biggest businesses growing in the valley is the robotics. Yes, thanks to Jeannie Heber and a lot of the work that she's done with education. Yeah. Well, we, she's training people in robotics, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of companies that are doing robotics. Oh, yes, that's, yes. Like, isn't there one right in the center of um, Whitensville? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. We don't realize what's going on here. Yeah, there's a lot. You, you know, you see a name of a company, but you don't know what they do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, and we are growing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the unemployment rate in the Valley is probably one of the lowest in the area. Really? I didn't know that. There's actually a shortage of people. That's why she does, uh, Jeannie does the Ed Hub. Oh, yeah. Because they're trying to educate people for the businesses that are here in mm -hmm. the Valley. Because they have a shortage of finding qualified people. Oh, that's interesting. Now, do you help companies on that, how, they find, how to find qualified people? No, I haven't. But in the future, if, if I came across something like that, it, depended, it would depend on what they're looking for. Um, but potentially... So basically, you're, you're teaching them how to have their employees work together. Yes. Which, yeah. which is the most important. Mm -hmm. if, you have, if you don't have a good relationship within the company, if you have people fighting with people, yeah. it's going to hurt the business. Yes. And, and nobody feels good. And then no. you lose employees, and people yep. are really stressed out and really anxious, and it's, yeah. not, it's not been a great culture for right. work for a while. Yeah, You can't spend a third of your life Mm -hmm. Working in a place where you're not getting along. Yeah. It's really bad for your health, and we're recognizing yeah. that now. Have you ever heard of the Blue Zones of Happiness? No. Dan Butner, I want to say is his name, and he's traveled the world, and he's done so much research, and he found the happiest places on earth where people are living the longest with healthy, happy lives. And the number one thing that they find consistent is fulfillment in their work fulfillment in their purpose oh. and you can't have that if you hate your work environment I, I think that's just a natural thing with mm -hmm. with, with human beings yeah you want to, you you know why are we here on earth what do you, we want a fulfillment out of spending the you know whatever amount of years we're going to be here right you want yeah. to get you want to feel like you accomplished something mm -hmm. but a lot of us were taught that work was just to pay bills I right. mean, I had a client I was speaking to yesterday she said my dad taught told me I'm supposed to hate work it's not supposed to be fun it's supposed to be to pay the bills See, and then we get stuck in that I, I told I have two sons I told both of them I don't give a darn if you're a janitor <laughs> or whatever you do as long as you like what you do yeah. you're never going to have to go to work mm -hmm. you're going to love what you do and you love to go yeah. and and one's a doctor and the other one's a heavy equipment mechanic oh cool and they both like what they do yeah so I said, you know, get in, get into something you like. That's mm -hmm. what I did. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't mind going to work every day. I loved going to work. I hated going on vacation. <laughs> really. I still love vacation. <laughs> I mean, it was nice. It was a nice little break, but I I, I wanted to get back. Yeah. 
And that's why I keep working, because I yeah. just like working. Mm -hmm. and, and being, like, you got to accomplish. Of course, sales, it's always a fact. It, it, the closing of the deal that makes you want to keep going. Yeah, that satisfaction. That satisfaction, <laughs> yeah. That you accomplished a sale. Yeah. Regardless of what you're selling. You know, you, you were able to, you succeeded. And whatever you sold, whatever you're doing, it has an impact. Right. It makes a ripple effect. Absolutely. You, don't, you oh, yeah. don't know the ripple effect that it, it actually makes. Right. Yeah. So you must talk that to some of these people that, that com completing the co corporate goal is what the idea is. That must be part of your seminar, right? Essentially, Yeah. I mean, really, they're they're all in it for whatever the end goal is, whatever the company needs from them, mm -hmm. um, and it's really using each other's different dynamics to figure out how to get to that end result in a healthy, right. fulfilling, satisfying way. We all do things differently. Like, I don't want to write a blog, but maybe you do, <laughs> and maybe that's where you can pick I, up my I slack. I do write a column. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> for uh, Rod Lee, a uh, local newspaper man, Started a magazine called, um, I forget the name of it now, Rambler. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm 75 years old. I keep getting these blank spots. <laughs> I'm reading an article about that, in fact. But anyway, that's another subject. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, write a call, I wrote a call. He had a newspaper in, in Northbridge called mm -hmm. Northbridge Times. I wrote a column there. So when he started this paper, he asked me to, to write a column for him. And I, that's what I did. It's another thing I like doing. Yeah. I just like doing yeah. it. Yeah. And sometimes that can be a problem because you can get, uh, mm. you know, uh, you just don't know what to write. Yeah. But I always manage it at the end of the month. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. But And I like doing this. Yeah. And doing things like this probably provides you the inspiration to write things for your column. Exactly. If oh, you yeah. don't get out, if you don't do enough of this, if you don't talk to enough people, you're probably not fueled. You don't have that inspiration. Meet people and read. Mm. Got to read a yes, lot. Yes, I'm, I'm a big reader, yeah. Yeah, I, that's the other thing. People, you know, we've gotten uh, out of reading because of, I think, a lot of times, because TV makes it simple. <laughs> you know, TV is an easy way of reading. Yeah. But it's lazy. You need to read. And if you read, you can write. Yeah, yeah. So I, that's why I, I like to, I read, uh, we, I'm always reading a book. Mm -hmm. Sometimes two at it's the same Me time. Me too. <laughs> sometimes yeah. two. It depends on which mood I'm in that day. Yeah. <laughs> and magazine articles. And sometimes I, I get too much into books. And I say, I gotta, I'm, I, my magazine starts stacking up. And I want to <laughs> read that. I want to read that. You just but, like to be busy. Yeah. Mm hmm and, and, and like I said, watching TV, I don't think you do the retention. And it's not, a, it's not effective for your brain health. I mean, when you take all these tests as you start to get older, they, are, they keep asking you, like, are you reading every day? What are you right. doing? And there's, you can't get that from TV. Yeah. See, I believe your brain is just like any other muscle in your body. Mm -hmm. You have to exercise it. Yeah. And reading exercises it. TV doesn't. Mm hmm even though I'm on TV, but we, this is interesting TV. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not like watching a, a soap opera or something like that. <laughs> We're learning here, right? Yes, <laughs> exactly. We're putting out an educational uh, phase to it. Exactly, yeah. But uh, how did you get into, uh, into consulting like that? Yeah, I, I went to school undergraduate for veterinary. So where I am right now probably makes no sense to most people. No, you went to veterinary school. <laughs> yes, yeah. Wow. Yeah, um, and I, I loved that. I, loved, I love animals. We yeah. still rescue animals. It's still a big part of my life. Um, but I realized that was not my purpose here. It was passion, but not really what my soul was looking for. So I went into real estate. And that just stressed me out. That was, I mean, I did great. I was winning awards in my first year. Everything looked great from the outside, but I was very stressed out. Financially, it can be very rewarding. Very much so. But yeah. it also can be very stressful mm -hmm. because you work the worst hours when you're in real estate. Yes. And I had one daughter, and I was pregnant with my second. And I realized how miserable I was. I mean, my phone would be ringing at 10, 11 at night. Yeah. There's no boundaries. It was not, it wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't the lifestyle I wanted. And so, your weekends are showing houses. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, a whole summer went by. I realized I didn't take my daughter to the beach. We didn't do anything fun. Um, right. And I knew these years I was never going to get back with my kids. I didn't want to do that. No, because when they, they're in school, nobody's calling. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when they're home, that's when everyone's calling because yeah. that's when they're home. Yeah, and that was at the height of when houses started to go really fast as soon as they were on the market. So yes. I had to bring someone to see a house immediately. And it was, it was a lot. It was not the lifestyle I wanted. And so that's when I had, you know, what I call now my quarter life crisis. Everyone I would talk to, I went around and I, I interviewed about 50 entrepreneurs that I knew. And I was asking them how they got into doing what they do because they loved it. And they were all older than me. And they were all saying, wow, you're hitting this, this midlife crisis really early in age. And so I called it my quarter life crisis. But I ended up hiring my first life coach. And... Then I hired another life coach, and best investments I ever made, they helped me understand what I wanted in life, what I was really good at, what I love doing, and helped me start up my first official coaching business. Oh. Yeah. Do you ever think about becoming a life coach? That was exactly as I started. Oh. Yeah. So with the, some of the clients I have right now, they are, it, it is life coaching, life and business coaching. It's uh -huh. It's all it's all holistic. It's all in one. So the private clients I have now are life coaching, technically. Oh. Yeah. And I, you do a podcast as well, right? I do. I have a top 10% global podcast. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's becoming more popular. Very much so. And I used to make fun of my dad for listening to NPR, and here I am listening to podcasts all the time. It's, based, <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> yes. But, you know, and there's such a variety of podcasts out there. Huge. You can listen to ones like mine, which are spiritual, personal development. And then you can have my husband who listens to podcasts about murder. I mean, there's podcasts about everything. Really? Yes. Yeah. That's a true, true thing. <laughs> he does what? He does a podcast about murder? He doesn't do it. He listens to them. Oh, he listens to all. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know there was such a thing. Oh, there's a few of them. Oh, mm -hmm. that's where they talk about murders that have taken place? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'll be <laughs> I tell you, there's everything <laughs> out there. Yeah. I know at the WCRM, we have a podcast studio. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah, so that uh, you do a professional podcast. Mm -hmm. And then it's put, on, it's put on the Internet, which, like I say, is you're all over the world. All over the world. I have people in Australia and China and New Zealand, everywhere. How do they pick up your podcasts? Apple Podcasts, Spotify. If they're just looking for any of the keywords that I'm talking about, which are things like human design or spirituality, personal development, then mine's one of the higher tiers that pops up. Oh, okay, yeah. So it's all a key. It's all, it's mm -hmm. just like a website. Yeah, SEO. It, it's a key, and what the key is what you put in for a yes key, a word exactly to uh, get people to log on to you. Yep. And you, how many people you have brought, what, listening to your website now? you know offhand? Or? I don't know how many as far as a number. I just know the podcast rating being top 10. Now, do you do ads on it? No, I only advertise my own things there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I, I know that that's probably going to come about too now. It probably will. Yeah, I, I have been offered, I've been asked a few diff by different people if they could put ads on my show. Right now, it doesn't feel aligned. It feels mm -hmm. very personal. Um, but in the future, I could definitely see doing something like that. Yeah, see, I, I'm in the advertising industry with the radio, and it, that's how it's changed dramatically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, social media has changed the way advertising is done. Oh, yeah. And, and so I don't really use a lot of social media. That didn't feel good to me. So that's why I use my podcast as mm -hmm. my own advertising, because they're there listening to me. They're taking in my content, that's where I'm going to advertise instead of on social media. Oh, okay. Now, if you have a business client, do you use your podcast with them as well? Yes. Yeah, I have. Yeah, so you don't have to visit them. They can actually listen in. Mm-hmm. Yep. But you probably also do, uh, what do you call it, Zoom. Oh, yeah, a lot, every day. <laughs> I'm on Zoom, Zoom every day, yeah. This is how the internet has changed this, <laughs> the world so much. It's unbelievable. It is. I mean, I remember back uh, the uh, World Fair in New York. I'm trying to think it was 1965, I think, or something oh. like that. And AT&T 
had the video phone. <laughs> and they thought that was something else. <laughs> That's standard now. We, we can do yeah. that with our cell phone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, or if you remember uh, that the cartoon show, The Jetsons. Yes. Yeah. You know, and they had, you know, you didn't, people didn't like it. Well, I'm not ready to be on, you know, have myself projected on the screen mm -hmm. because I haven't just got up or something. But now, that's standard. Yeah. I don't do it. <laughs> but I'm not that savvy with the cell phone or anything. But I know a lot of people do that now. Yeah. There's a lot of technology and um, even AI, even with us, with coaching in our industry, you can use AI for everything. Writing emails. That is really changing things, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. <laughs> now, AI is coming into your type of work, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I see the benefit of it where when you're lacking creativity, like what we were just talking about, and maybe you need to write an email or think of a podcast episode for content, AI is really helpful in helping you put some pieces together. Uh, but it also takes a lot of the personality out of it if you're not changing anything. Say, yeah. Yeah. You don't use EA, AI to write. No, I don't. I don't really write much either. <laughs> right. But some people do. Yes, right. Uh, I use it. In a sense, I have Amazon. Uh, oh, the Alexa. Alexa. Yeah. And I use it to find facts. Yeah. If I want to find out a fact, if I want to find out if so a celebrity or someone is still alive, I just yeah. ask, Amazon, is this person <laughs> alive? And, and it tells you. Yeah. But I don't, I don't use it to do any of my writing mm -hmm. or anything. I try to use my own ideas. Yeah. But that is becoming a big factor. And it's something that I think we have to embrace. It's not going yeah. away, so. Well, we've got to be careful. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, when AI was first introduced to us in Space Odyssey, 2001. Oh, really? The computer hell. <laughs> that was AI. It took over the ship. That's creepy. <laughs> and it eliminated the, oh, I don't know if you ever saw the movie. No, space oh. freaks me out. <laughs> oh, okay. Arthur C. Clarke wrote the book, it was also very good, 2001 Space Odyssey. And this ship is traveling to Jupiter, and, and uh, the ship is taken over by the computer, which is called HAL, it's, which is an anagram, I forget what it stands for. But he, he has each one of the astronauts commit suicide. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, because they were going to be a problem for the mission. And it, the computer was making that decision. Well, that took a dark turn. And, that, <laughs> and so it was, in a way, it was saying that be careful of AI because yeah, yeah. we don't want, if AI takes over too much, it, it, it'll probably destroy you. Mm. And, yeah, and yeah there's back, a lot of thought about that. And that, and that came out in, uh, well, in the late 60s. Wow. Mm. So, I mean, it's just... Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I like AI, I like a, the concept, but you still got to be careful of it. Yeah. But we can't, and this, this brings us to robots taking over as well. <laughs> they start thinking. I always think of the movie The Fifth Element. Did you ever see that with Bruce Willis? No, but well, I've heard of it. I just can't imagine <clears throat> what life's going to look like in even 20 years. Very yeah. different. I mean, just in the time that I've been on this earth, everything has changed drastically. Brought in home computers, cell phones, everything oh. is way different. Yeah, the home computer has really made a world of mm -hmm. difference. But now, more so than everything, than anything, is the cell phone. Yeah. And cell phone is, everybody walks around with a computer now. Mm -hmm. Not only the fact that, talk about communications. <laughs> God, if you go back, you know, a number of years, well, I remember, I was on the road selling. Yeah. When, when my wife was pregnant for our first, I had no way of knowing when oh. she was going to go to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. And I happened to be up in Westminster on a, at a store, and I was talking to her. I said, I got a feeling I got to go home. I am home, and she had gone to the hospital. Mm. Well, today, well, she had no way of getting home with me. What, are you going to call a pay phone? <laughs> the only way I could get a hold of them was I had to call every time I got near a pay phone. I just think that's really great that you listened to your intuition and you went home. Yeah, and it, it was a good move. Mm-hmm. But uh, today, you call them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I can't get a hold of you. Yeah, <laughs> you're right here. And it's 24-7. Yeah, all the time. And, and now you've got to take your cell phone with you everywhere you go. Yeah. Because someone might try to get a hold of you. Yeah. And my husband got 
an Apple Watch, and he keeps asking if I want one, and I don't want one. Yeah, I now want it's less. even some more so with the watch. <laughs> yeah. Because the watch is a phone. Yeah. That's the other thing, Dick Tracy, and, and uh, if you ever heard of Dick Tracy yeah, comics, heard of him. Mm -hmm. yeah, they used to talk about the hit, the talk on a on their watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now that's a common it's thing. Actually happening, yes. Yeah, I yeah. mean, just I, in fact, I wrote about that in one of my columns Did about you? the fact that a, yeah. a lot of things we thought about in science fiction is now fic mm -hmm. is fact now. Yeah, and it's just amazing. It, and and the the further we get with this, the further. The smaller the circuits get, the smaller our way of building things get. It's unbelievable. Yeah. We're, we're gonna, we'll be managed by machines. Mm. And just uh, the lack of communication from human to human is what yes. really bothers me. Yeah, that's really gonna. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm afraid that's gonna happen. Yeah, I just love being present. I don't want to be when I'm in the moment with my kids. I don't want my my wrist to vibrate and then me to go like this because you <laughs> yeah. have it's a human reaction you're like oh and I don't one of the biggest things that I teach in what I do is presence and being with yourself and your body and I feel like too much technology really takes away from that I'm pro technology my business is built on technology yes. um, but I also believe in stepping away from it yeah I mean I think we're gonna have to have time when people say I'm shutting the phone off mm. yeah I mean, you know, I see people in restaurants. I mean, but if they're not on the phone, they're probably checking social media. Or, yeah. Yeah. But now even I walk in a restaurant and you see a little a kid, I mean, a preschooler with a computer. Yeah. <laughs> I will say my two-year-old is terrible at a restaurant. So if we have to give him a YouTube video, we will. But other than that, I don't love the idea of them yeah. always having it. Well, I mean, I have no problem with that. Yeah. But uh, kids today, I mean, they're, they're growing up. I mean, they're, they're, yeah. I'm t you're talking, uh, you know, what do you call it? Uh, less than a year old when they go on a computer. They're mm -hmm. playing with computers. Yeah. It becomes a natural factor. Mm -hmm. Whereas we, you get the older generation, some people are even afraid of them because they just don't know what they're doing, with how to do this. Yeah, yeah. But it's becoming a, a factor that you can't go through life without some way mm -hmm. using a computer. Yeah. Yep. I mean, you go to the bank, you go you go shopping. Mm -hmm. What we're doing now. Self-checkout. Self-checkout. Yeah. Whoever thought that would come yeah. about. <laughs> I and, know. And, and I'm beginning to think that eventually it will be 100%. Probably. Yeah. I, I really think it will. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you go into some of these stores now, you're down to two checkout lanes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and you go over, and there's about 10 self checkouts. So yeah. I guess the industry to go into for kids is tech. <laughs> yeah, really is. Yeah. I mean, uh, computer tech, ro robotics and computer tech is going to be the future. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's probably why what I do is even more important now than ever. Because it's it's the coming back home to yourself and yes and who you are and your body and what your needs are and not getting lost in all of that. Right now, especially uh, working on Zoom at home, it's mm -hmm. going to be a, it's a whole different world, isn't it? It is. It very much is. Um, and I start to get a lot of those computer headaches, so I have to walk away and. Take oh. off my, my blue light glasses. I was gonna say we have blue glasses. Yeah, it's it still gets to be too much though. But my body tells me when it needs to, when I need to step away and then come back. I think though that some technology that come along that's going to handle that blue screen situation. I hope so. I really hope so. Oh, they always do. Mm. They'll come up with something. That's true. Because it is a problem, mm -hmm. and people are on there now. These people are on there for twelve hours a day. Yeah. Yes. That's that's the trickiest part, especially from working from home. You don't have people interrupting you, which sometimes is annoying, but sometimes that interruption is a really much needed break that you didn't recognize you needed. Yeah, yeah, because you're home, you're not you're not getting that break. Nobody's mm -hmm. coming in. Except for my kids, they'll run in right. my office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but when they're in school. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got a little one at home. Still. Yeah, I do. I have two little ones at home. Yeah. Oh. You get interrupted a lot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it, it's quite the thing, though. I mean, the way it, the industry has changed and mm -hmm. how 
And, and that brings your, your consulting business more important now than ever. Yeah, bringing back the human connection. Absolutely. And how do these companies are able to do that? I mean, I don't know what they, what do you do all day on a computer? The companies, you mean? Yeah. No. <laughs> They're constantly in meetings which is one of my pet peeves because then people never get anything done. They're so just they're constantly doing it on meetings. Zoom. Yeah, most of the time, yeah. Um, and so it's sometimes there's almost like over-communication where no one can actually do what they needed to get right. done. Right. <laughs> but I mean, I know that, you know, in some cases they're, they're handling invoices and mm -hmm. writing out invoices, things like that. A lot of the time, everything is technology now. So everything right. they have to keep track of is basically on the computer. Yes, I know. I mean, I, my wife worked in inventory control. It was all by hand. Mm. Oh, yeah. You wrote it on a card. Yeah. Now it's all on a computer. <laughs> yeah. And they are more accurate than ever. Mm -hmm. I remember many years ago, it, the computer would tell you had two in stock and you had none. Because, you know, it's information, right? But back then, it was all put in by hand. Mm -hmm. Now everything's scanned in, mm -hmm. so it's much more accurate. Yeah, yeah. Scanned in, scanned out. But it's exhausting sitting there just staring at a computer most right. of the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, we, we, we got rid of assembly work. You know, very, mm -hmm. very little assembly work in this country anymore. Yeah. Because it was very tedious, mm -hmm. and people didn't like it. They did it because they made a living. Mm -hmm. But we got away from that. But now we're going into just sitting at a computer all day and, and staring at numbers or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. So you, do you consult people and businesses on how to get people away from that from time to time so they don't get so... In my own way, yes. It's more talking to the individuals on the team and telling them what they can do for themselves and, you know, in the meantime, the supervisor, manager, team leader, whoever is also there. So we're hoping they're taking in all the same information. Some people really need to work alone and maybe go for a walk and, and get that energy or whatever that they need. Um, and some people really aren't like I am designed. I could work all day, but not everyone. Some people are designed to work two to three hours and then rest. I know people who have had to take naps at work because they just don't have that kind of energy. But when they are in that zone of work, they're extremely efficient. They still get everything done. Um, and so it's really talking to the individual about advocating for themselves and trusting what their body's telling them. Burnout is higher than ever. And this is not just a mental fatigue thing. This is actual cortisol levels are through the floor and I've experienced that myself and it, it was awful. So it's an actual biological problem if we're not following our own body's needs. Oh, so what you tell you, uh, your clients is your, let your employees follow their own needs. Yes. Yeah. And they'll be more productive. Mm -hmm. And happier. So even if they take a little nap during, the, during their work hours, no big deal. They're, they're going to be more productive in the end. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know, you know, if you go back a number of years, you go back to the old days and when we had all the mills, God, you'd be fired if you yeah. slept on the job. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But we're finding today that that's not a problem. Yeah. Because it's healthier. It's healthy right. for people. And especially imagine if you had a parent that was up all night with a newborn or, you oh, know, another know. child. It's really unhealthy for them to not get any rest. Right. Well, we've come a long way in industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you, you get uh, family leave now. Yeah. Which yeah. makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. so, so that people get to know their, their children. Yeah. Their children get to know them. Mm -hmm. But then they also have a situation where... Some people just can't want to get right back to work, and they they send the kids to daycare. Mm -hmm. and I don't I don't think that's a good thing either. They should, we try the company should work with them and try to at least for the first year, maybe daycare for a couple of days, mm -hmm. but then some days at home works out better. Yeah, there are some countries that give a year of maternity leave or more. Right. Where my husband works for a company in the Netherlands. 
and you can have up to two years off for... That's unreal. And that's not even for um, parental leave. That's for stress and anxiety. Now, how does the company handle that, though? I mean, mm. you, you've got employees. You, you, buy, you hire people you need. Mm -hmm. You don't hire people you don't need. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So if you, if you don't have them for two yeah. years, how do you handle it? You have to buy someone in temporarily? Or? That's a good question. I haven't experienced that through his company yet, so I'm not sure. I would probably guess a temp, but I'm not. Or others picking up the slack, but that wouldn't be the healthiest probably. Right. So I'm not sure. But we did um, experience when he first started, one of the women was actually out on leave by yep. a doctor. Doctor prescribed leave for work-related stress and it was it, the way that it was approached was beautifully and with grace and they you know asked for what they could do to support her and I think here if something like that happened this woman would have just quit her job because of the stress but they gave her the space to understand what she needed to voice what she needed mm -hmm. and now she's still there Oh. So it's a it's a big difference than what a lot right. of the companies are doing here. So they kept a valuable employee right. by just giving you a little slack. Right, yeah. Well, like I say, I still can't understand how, you know, you, you, you hire people that you need, you need that position filled. <laughs> how can you, you know, how can you spare that position? Yeah, I don't know. Especially in some cases, it might yeah. be a real key position. Mm-hmm. It's a very yeah. different culture. <laughs> yeah. See, I... I always thought that, I said, you know, when, when I saw government uh, requiring maternity leaves and things like that, and now maternity leaves for both uh, husband and wife in some mm -hmm. cases. Yeah. How did, they, how did the company handle that? I don't know. The only thing that I Temp, can see yeah. is if you can work from home. Yeah, right, true. If you want to. You know, I mean, I can understand a few weeks because they they work with that now. You you might, you know, have companies that have three and four week vacations. Mm -hmm. So if they can, they can spare you for that amount of time, they can spare you for maternity leave or something like that for a number of weeks. Yeah. But when it comes, turns into months. Or years. Or years, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like the Netherlands, two years, that's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. I'm not sure what they do. Probably And, and that's time. paid leave. <clears throat> mm-hmm. That's paid as far as what I've understood. Yes, that's paid. Yeah, see, so that now not only are they losing that position, they're paying for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and for a small company, that could be really tough. Yeah. Yeah, but maybe it doesn't happen that much because they are happier in their work. Right. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, they're happier in the end. I would think, mm -hmm. you know, you know, maybe it's a little tough for that little bit of time, but then it works out in the mm -hmm. end. Yeah. But uh, most, but I like your idea though. You go into a company and teach people how to work together, and how to be in harmony, because mm -hmm. that's the whole key. I mean, if if, it it, if it, you don't have harmony within the company, mm -hmm. you're not going to get good results. No, and it, I mean, even just from your own personal standpoint, if you're sitting there staring at a computer all day and you have to write something, a blog article or whatever, right? And you have a headache. How can you do your best work? when you're being forced to work through a headache or some sort of discomfort or fatigue. It doesn't make sense. And no. so we just need the, the healthier work culture, healthier people, happier people who know they can step away and go for a walk or maybe go home and take a rest and figure it out. We encourage them to stay home if they don't feel well. Right. It's better to have them home if they're not feeling well. Yeah. I, I had a boss that... If you called in sick, he'd say, okay, I, I want to work with you today. <laughs> and he did that to me one time, and oh, I ended wow. up getting pneumonia. Oh. <laughs> so I was, that always isn't a good idea. Mm. I mean, I never wanted to take time. Well, I, <clears throat> I wouldn't call in sick even if I was sick, but mm -hmm. I was really sick at that time. And it got worse. Yeah. I ended up being out for two weeks. Oof. So it doesn't always pay to make a person come in. No, no, it does not. But, you know, they think that, oh, they're just trying to go brick. Mm -hmm. But that's not always true. No. And now you, you, that's what you try to get company to understand, right? Very much so. Um, and also just to be your own advocate and ask for what you need. Um, I uh, think the changes that I'm seeing with companies, big or small, and how much they're making an effort to make sure that the individual person feels purposeful, 
feels happy is it's really inspiring and I think by the time my kids are in the workforce I think it'll be a completely different changed uh, situation I think that the majority of kids are going to be following their heart following their purpose not uh-huh. stuffed into other roles and just told to do the work you're also finding that they're adjusting their hours oh yes yeah especially based on how productive they are right I mean, I'm a late morning person. I'm, yes. I'm, I have my brain in the morning between like 9 and 12. But some people are night owls, and they actually get their creativity at night. Right, so they're more adjusted to working those later hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you find people work, work at different, better at different times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some people aren't really good morning people, and they, some people thrive at getting up early in the morning and going to work, and some people don't. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And I think the companies are starting to adjust to that. Mm-hmm. I mean, why have someone sitting at a desk in your office if they're half asleep and they're not going right. to be able to do what you need them to right. do? It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, and, and, it, and it also gives you better coverage because mm-hmm. you can adjust the hours for people coming in. Yeah, true. Yeah. You think very logically, technically. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I, I had learned many years ago when I, when I worked in my career job, they said they had come up with the conclusion that employees rather have praise than a raise. Mm, yes. You find that true? I, I do, yeah, I they, do. They, they'd rather be credited for doing something mm-hmm. well yeah. than to give them a raise. Yeah, and I, I think of it just like what I've been taught with my kids, and um, you know, we reprimand them or we tell them, no, they can't do this, but it's more important to actually make sure when they're doing something really well or they're listening or they're not fighting, whatever it is, to point out, point out those spaces and those times. And I think the same goes for most humans. They just want to know that they're being appreciated, that they're doing a good job, that all their hard work isn't going unnoticed. It's right. a big difference. Yeah, I agree. I think, and I think they work harder at it. Mm-hmm. And you know you can you can give the monetary part, but and you must do that as well because yeah. everybody needs a raise, mm-hmm. and just to cover inflation. But it's like I said, they need the praise more so. Mm-hmm. Especially if they're already love if they love the job, the money yeah. just follows suit. So they right. really just need to hear that they're appreciated, that they're they're recognized. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, all, I've always worked on incentives, so that, and I got more money if I got, if I make my incentives. So that's always been the thing, but yeah. <clears throat> I always wanted to tr- do the job, good job, too. Just to know that you were satisfied and did the right. job, yeah. <laughs> and, and you satisfy yourself that way. Yeah, it's fulfilling. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fulfilling in the end. Mm-hmm. Knowing when you go home, well, I did a good job today. Yeah. It's productive, I helped people, I made an impact, whatever right. it is for you. Yeah. And that's part of your consultation with the uh, employees? Depends on what we're talking about. Huh. When I'm in my private coaching where people are coming to me outside of a company, it's very focused on the impact that you want to make and, and what you actually want to do, what's purposeful to you. Mm-hmm. I think if I went into a lot of companies talking about that, people might just quit their job and go find what they, they love to do. <laughs> <laughs> a little too motivational. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm Really, it's, it's something what you're doing here. And you, like I say, you're reaching out all over the country, all over the world, really. World, yeah. And I think, a cop, you know, when you get into a corporation, most corporate managers don't know that. Mm-hmm. They don't realize a lot of things you're talking about. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was not industry standard for any industry. Right. <laughs> and especially uh, CEOs. Right. Mm-hmm. They're more concerned with the bottom line. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, it's important. What most important thing in your company is your, is your, is your, uh, your employees. Absolutely. And I also find a lot of CEOs are overworked as well overrun yeah. and overworked and um, I don't think many people were taught to delegate and hire the right people 
I think that there's very much I have to do it myself and to do it right mentality, which I get I it. You're right. I was going to say, don't you find that a lot of CEOs feel that they got to make sure it gets done right mm -hmm. they, they do it themselves. Yes. And that's the worst thing to do. It is. It really is. Um, I mean, if I suppose if you have no kids, you have nothing waiting for you at home, and you really just want to spend your entire day in the office, sure. But the majority of people I meet don't, and they're very burnt out. Um, but they don't trust anyone else to take care of things. But you'll burn yourself out quicker mm -hmm. that way. Yes. And if you can delegate, you probably get a better job. Because mm -hmm. you, you spread it out. Absolutely, yeah. And yeah. hiring's hard. I mean, it's well, been Well, that's difficult. the hardest thing in the world. It is. It's very hard to find the right people. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you can do the interview. You can do anything. You find, ask all kinds of questions, but you still don't know if that play is going to work out. Right, right. And, and that, that's why I would never want to be an HR. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be that's gonna be the toughest job yet. Yeah, I agree. And now, HR goes even further than just hiring. You're the arbitrator in the company. Oh yeah. That seems to what what that position has become. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they've been um, the everywhere man for a while, I think. Yeah, I don't know if you ever heard the commercial. That company that uh, that does HR, the one where they say uh, you get someone at work that uh, hasn't taken a bath, <laughs> something like that. How do you handle it? Uh, well, today with the uh, sexual harassment, things like uh, yeah, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I go way back. My employee, I started working, you know, in the '60s, and. Uh, that wasn't thought about. And it was common, though. Of course it was, yeah. But nobody thought of the big deal, mm -hmm. which was wrong. I'm, I'm, I totally... Mm -hmm. No one should be have to be afraid to go to work because of sexual harassment. Or anywhere. Or yeah. any kind of harassment. Mm -hmm. But that was common. Yep. Yeah. And now, you, 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 if you do that, you, it becomes quite a, uh, a, an involvement and cause for lawsuits and everything else. Yeah, absolutely. So HR people got a tough job on their hands. Mm -hmm. Well, we got to wrap it up. We're getting out to the last oh, minute here. See how the hour flew by? Yes, it did. <laughs> this is a conversation. Well, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. And uh, Adriana, how do we get a hold? How is it, if anyone wants to get a hold of you, how do you get a hold of you? Oh, yeah, my website, adrianakeefe.com. So Adriana's with one N. Um, and everything is housed there. You can find my social media, my podcast, everything. Okay. Oh, it's all on your website. All on my website. Yeah. Yes, and your podcast is there 24-7. All the time. There's all about right. 111 yeah. episodes or something like that. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, next week, we're going to have Senior Info. Our month, first of the month, mm. we do Senior Info. I oh. have a show with the uh, uh, Council on Aging Director That's as great. well as... Uh, we bring a guest in, and I've got a special guest coming in from uh, Millbury nice. who uh, advises on how to how to pick a nursing home, oh. how to uh, our uh, home care, wh yeah. whatever, which is a big thing now. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, yeah. we'll see you next week.